Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. Real, real quick, before we get started here, I just want to ask you all a quick question. I finally got internet run up to the shop here. Well, actually, it's one of those remote, like, point-to-point kind of connections things. It's feeding from the house. But anyways, it works very, very well. So I've got blazing fast speeds up internet up here at the shop now. Uh, if there is any interest in maybe once a month, once a week doing uh, like a, a live stream, uh, doing some Q&A live stream, let me know down below if that's something that would be of interest and that you would tune into. And I can certainly make that one happen. Finally, I love having the internet up here. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video. So welcome back to the shop, everybody. Hope you are all doing well. My name is Andy with Bulwarks today. Now, before I jump into things, there's two quick updates that I want to run through. Uh, the first is regarding the last video that I put out when I was making these covers that I need here at the house to cover the gas line, specifically the gas line regulator here before the snow starts flying. And in that video, I had asked, uh, I took a poll to see how you guys would like to see this finished, whether I should finish it with gel coat or finish it with paint. And overwhelmingly, it was voted on to be finished with gel coat. Now, that directly ties into my uh, the update number two, which is uh, my, sh my shoulders are not there yet. Uh, the first one that I had done five months ago, that one's do that's great. Uh, but the second one that I had done roughly seven weeks ago, uh, not so much. He, I tried to do some, just some very basic light, non-strenuous things here uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it, it just, it wasn't having it. <laughs> it, it wasn't, it, no, it wasn't having it, and I paid for it for about a week or so there afterwards. So, Although it's doing well for seven weeks along, um, it's only been seven weeks. And that's, uh, I just need to keep that in mind. I'm just, I'm getting impatient, but it's just all it is, it, it takes some time. Now, this is gonna happen. I am gonna be finishing this and I'm actually gonna be spraying this. So that'll be kind of some, that'll be something that I have not shown yet on this channel. So keep an eye out for that one. It's gonna happen. I have roughly two more months until the snow starts flying. So I'm not worried about the timeline, uh, but at least for the time being, as of right now, uh, it's just not in the cards, but it will be very soon. So now with that out of the way, what I do want to go over this week is I want to address a topic that I've been getting for whatever reason. It's been pretty much nonstop this, this year, specifically, you know, in the late fall, early, or late summer, early fall. And there are slight variations of it, but essentially a lot of the questions are along the lines of what materials do I need to have on hand in order to do some just basic, general, run-of-the-mill cosmetic uh, gel coat repairs. Now, this may seem like a pretty simple and straightforward topic, but it can very easily get confusing when you start looking or going down the rabbit hole and looking at all the material options that are available out there. Uh, some of them are really good. Some of them leave a lot to be desired and some are just flat out garbage. And that's what I want to weed through today. So when I say cosmetic type touch-ups or repairs, what exactly am I referring to? Well, old screw holes, uh, old bolt holes. Maybe you had a piece of hardware mounted on deck or someplace and it's just, you no longer need it. You wanna make it go away and you don't wanna leave some open holes. So things along those lines. Uh, maybe you had some stress cracks that uh, came up over the summer or some voids that opened up uh, underneath the gel coat. Just, you know, minor things like that. I'm not talking about transom replacements or anything like that, um, but strictly cosmetic things. I'm talking about projects that you can get turned around, start to finish in a weekend still enjoying your your happy hour you know shortly after lunch so these are quick turnaround projects now in no particular order the probably the first uh, item that i would suggest that people have on hand and i'd say pretty much every boat owner should have have this um is just going to be a small can of laminating non-waxed polyester resin now this is the the type of resin that you're going to be using if you have to wet out any fiberglass now on that note of the fiberglass well, i would also suggest that you have a, a yard of one and a half ounce chop strand matting. Uh, when it comes to doing cosmetic type coverings, chop strand matting is pretty hard to beat. I, I wouldn't use it you know, for anything that could be potentially structural. There are much better options for that. But when it comes to cosmetic type coatings, like going over crazing or stress cracks or just making sure old, old holes that you patch don't pop back through, a layer or two of chop strand matting will keep all of that from happening. Now, the second item that I suggest people take a look at is structural repair putty. And essentially what this is, a, it, it's a pre-thickened polyester resin that, are, that has some like milled glass fibers or fiberglass strands kind of mixed in with it. 
Uh, I think some people refer to it as like kitty hair or something like that, but the structural repair putty. Now this is a very versatile and, and useful material to have on hand. You can use, you can use it for quite a few things. Um, you can use it for fairing. You know, I, I, I wouldn't say it's the best option just because of, you know, how, how hard it is to sand, but you can certainly use that. Uh, you can also use it for if you had like old voids that had, you know, opened up like gel coat voids. You chip off all the loose gel coat, you can pack that void in with this with this uh, repair putty, and then you've got a solid base that you can go ahead and shape and then finally, you know, coat over it and finish it with some gel coat. Some scrapes, chips, dings, anything that you need to do some fill. Now, again, because this has some fiberglass mixed into it, you can lay this material up, you know, quite a bit thicker than what you would normally do if you were using just strictly a, a fairing compound or just a general filler. Uh, I would say comfortably, up to maybe a quarter inch in thickness maximum. Now, I wouldn't go any more than that. If you have more than a quarter inch of build that you need to do, I'd probably better just to lay up some more glass. But if you've already got you know a sufficient amount of glass down and this little area you're working on is still quite a bit low, rather than going through and laying on another six, seven, eight more layers of glass, we're talking over a little patch like this, you can go ahead and you can fill that in with the structural repair putty sand it smooth and then you you will be perfectly fine you know this is not going to chip out and, and pop off on you now one key note of this structural repair putty is that it is a non-waxed material so essentially what that means is that you can do a layup on one day come back the next day the next week doesn't matter uh, and you can lay up some additional material without having to sand this is also a material that you can use above or below the water line and that's kind of a key distinction here on our next uh, on our next product now, the next product that I'd suggest having on hand is just some general polyester fairing compound. Now, this is generally this is going to be the material that you're going to use last just before you're ready to apply your gel coat. And basically what this is, well, it's a fairing compound. It's a lightweight polyester based material that doesn't have really anything in it other than some glass, hollow glass spheres or micro balloons and it has zero strength to it. So as far as thickness that you can lay this up, you wanna keep this stuff thin. Uh, at an absolute maximum, maybe an eighth of an inch. Uh, preferably, I would use this primarily just as like skim coats for filling in pinholes and things like that. Uh, because it's, it, it doesn't have any you know, glass fibers into it, like the structural repair putty, uh, it, it can be very brittle if, it, if you have any kind of a thickness there. So this is just strictly a cosmetic type of a skim coat material. Uh, but the, the, the thing to keep a note about this stuff is that it is not intended to be used below the waterline. So if you have a, a, a touch up that you have to do that's below the waterline and you need to do some fairing, you have some options. I mean, you can use epoxy if you're gonna be finishing with bottom paint, but I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole yet. But if you're intending to finish that little patch with gel coat, then that would be a better application of the structural repair putty for the fairing rather than the actual polyester fairing compound. Now, anything above the waterline, the polyester fairing compound is, is going to sand a lot easier. So that's why I was saying, you know, the, although the, the structural repair putty, you can use it as a fairing compound, it's probably not the best option. And that strictly comes down to its uh, sandability, if that's really a word. Um, you can sand it obviously, but it's gonna take a lot more effort than if you're trying to sand this uh, polyester fairing compound. Now the next item is kind of the star of the show here because we're talking about, well, gel coat repairs, right? Uh, and I'm not talking get a big, get a big gallon. I'm talking just have a little quart on hand in the spring, kind of pre-color it so you have color matched gel coat for the rest of the season. Because you know, anytime you go out boating, there's a chance that well, sometimes shit happens. And if you have that color matched gel coat on hand, that makes you know turning these projects around lightning quick. Now, specifically the type of gel coat that you should be looking for, I would say go with a non-waxed or a laminating gel coat. It, more likely, you, you're going to want to start with a white base rather than the neutral base. 90% of the boats out there are going to start off with a white base. Uh, the exception to that would be is if you have like a very bright or vibrant color, like a fire, you know, fire engine red or banana yellow or, you know, whatever, something along those lines or really dark blue. Those are going to require that you start with a neutral base, but for 90% of the boats out there that are white, off-white, cream, beige, something along like that, uh, you're going to be starting with a white, with a white base. And also, you know, the appropriate pigments. And, you know, for most of your boats out there, again, white, off-white, cream, beige, something along those lines, uh, the three color pigments that you're going to want to have are going to be black, brown, and yellow. Uh, kind of 
interesting, maybe not interesting to you, but I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, Island packets, if you, you know, they kind of have that, that very unique kind of orangey color. Uh, the colors that you need for that are going to be your black, brown, and yellow, but us, surprisingly, it requires an awful lot of red. Uh, maybe too much information, but anyway, anywho, I thought it was pretty cool when I finally figured it out. <laughs> So you have all your material laid up. Now you need to cure it so that you can sand it, shape it, or polish it, finish it, you know, whatever it is you gotta do. Uh, and to do that, you have a couple options. Probably the easiest solution would be to go over top of your gel coat with some PVA or polyvinyl alcohol, essentially liquid plastic. Just a very light coating over top of the, the set up gel coat. You don't wanna do it over the gel coat while it's still wet. Uh, you should be able to touch it without anything coming up on your finger, but just a very light coating. This particular PVA is purple. You want to be able to just see just a very light purple haze over top of the gel coat. So that's option number one. Let that sit for two, three, four hours, depending on temperatures, and the material should be cured. This is water soluble product, so you can go ahead and you can wipe that off with some with a Scotch Brite and some warm water. You don't even need any soap, and now you're ready to start um, doing your wet sanding and then eventually your polishing. Option number two is on the gel coat that you're going to be applying as like your final show coat or your finish coat, you can mix in a wax additive uh, in with that non-waxed material. This is the wax that they mix that you mix in that takes a laminating material into a finishing material. This particular one's made by Fiberlay. Um, there we go. I just got to figure out how to be smarter than the camera, <laughs> but. But you can mix this in uh, at 3% by volume into your gel coat. And then what happens after, as it's applied, the wax floats up to the surface, creates that air barrier, sealing everything off so that everything beneath it can fully cure and do its thing. At that point, you can wipe it all down. Again, I would let that sit for two, three, four hours um, until the gel coat is, is hard. Just to kind of bank your bets, just wait until the following day. But at that point then, before you start wet sanding, I'd go through and I'd give it a wipe down with a solvent cleaner or a, like some type of a solvent cleaner, surface cleaner, de-waxer kind of a thing, just so that you remove that surface layer of wax so that when you start sanding, you're not gonna gum up your paper right away. Now, I did do a video on how to go about, you know, curing these different materials. I'll include a link for that up in here. Uh, and it goes through the different ratios and how to measure it all out and, you know, all the, you know, I guess the details that are maybe a little bit more in depth than what I want to cover here right now. But I will include a link for that video right up in here as well as down below in the description. And last but not least, you've got your gel coat laid up. You've got it wet sanded. Now you need to polish it. The last thing that, and honestly, I think this is like a mandatory thing that every boat owner should have if they do, you know, any type of like spring cleanup before they launch their boat. And that is some buffing compound, specifically this stuff. Now, over the years, I've worked with pretty much every type of uh, bu buffing compound out there, from Meguiar's to 3M to, I don't know, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, but there were several instances where everything that I tried, just it could not cut the gel coat and get it back to that good polish. This stuff I has yet to ever fail me. And this would cut material that none of the other stuff could do. And it did it quickly, brought it up to an excellent gloss. It just, it works. Now, I mentioned this, I'm gonna kind of give a little bit of a push on this one because this is one of those products that they, that Total Boat routinely sells out of in the springtime just because you get the spring rush. Um, now, it, the, the material doesn't go bad. So if you're one of those that does a lot of spring cleanup, you know, whether you're just doing a general buff on the hull or even for finishing off repairs, this is some excellent, excellent material to have. I would order it now, so it's better to have it and not need it until spring than to, well, shit, now you need it, now you can't get it. So if you wanna, if you gonna get some now, I will have some links down below to each of these specific products. And you know, they are affiliate links, so it gets me a few pennies on the dollar, uh, but it doesn't cost you anything and, hey, Consider it like a slush fund for me, beer money. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it, I can't drink beer anymore. Stupid gluten. So that's all the materials. Now I, I wanna run through some, just some real quick examples just so you can get an idea of the, the workflow, kind of how each of these different materials can be layered and how they all work with one another. So to start, I'd say, let's look at just doing some stress cracks. Almost every bullet has them. They're almost always in like a little radius. Uh, but stress cracks. So the first thing you're gonna do as prep, you're gonna come in with a grinder or a sander, however, you're, you know, whatever tools you've got available. You're gonna remove that, that top layer of gel coat. You're gonna expose some bare fiberglass. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna use your laminating polyester resin and a little strip of chop strand matting. You're gonna wet that out. 
you know, let that uh, do its thing for a couple of hours. Uh, at that point then, you're gonna go over top of with one of two materials. Uh, you can either take some of this wax additive and mix it in with some gel coat, apply that over top of the, the fiberglass, that will allow the fiberglass itself to cure so that you can sand and shape that. Or you can also go over top of that with the polyester fairing compound because that also contains wax. Either one of those would be appropriate. And then as the final layer, you're gonna apply your, your color matched uh, gel coat. Next, old screw holes, bolt holes. I'm talking things that are, you know, maybe like a, a quarter inch in diameter or less. Uh, what I would suggest is first off, before you do anything, pack the hole with the structural repair putty. Uh, at that point then, come in with a sander, grinder, whatever, and just kind of dimple the surface, lay a little patch of the top strand matting using your laminating polyester resin, and then over top of that, again, you can go back over with some gel coat that contains wax, or you can go over it with the fairing compound, again, which also contains wax, and then finish off with your gel coat. Next thing, you've got some chips, deep scratches, maybe some voids, that kind of thing. You're gonna chip off and remove any and all loose material. You don't need to get crazy, but if you can get in there with a screwdriver and just try and chip off any, if the gel coat will chip off, then it, it needs to go anyways. But if we're looking at a void or a, uh, anything like that, chip off any loose or damaged gel coat, clean it, and then go ahead and pack that void with the structural repair putty. And then again, it's gonna be the same process. You know, there's, there's a bit of a routine that becomes very repetitive when you're working with these materials. But you'll pack that with the structural repair putty, and then you'll go over top of that with your gel coat that contains wax or the polyester fairing compound, and then uh, eventually you're gonna finish off with your color matched gel coat. Now when it comes to scratches, you know, shallow scratches, that honestly, you're just gonna apply that, just, you're just gonna apply the gel coat itself. Uh, you, there is no need to fill it. You can just go ahead and you can pack that in with two, maybe three applications of gel coat to build it up and sand that down and you should be good to go. Now, when it comes to applying your gel coat, whether it's on like a longer strip or just tiny little patches, uh, you can apply gel coat in a couple of different ways. Uh, probably for small areas, you're either just gonna brush it or you can even come in with a like a, a, a tongue depressor and just literally just dab the gel coat in. It doesn't have to look pretty at first because it's all gonna get sanded down and shaped, but you just need to get the gel coat on there. Or you can come in and you can spray it, which is what I'm gonna be doing on these uh, covers here when, I'm, when I get to that point. So that's gonna be in the next video here, I'm gonna be going through and doing the, the, the process for mixing and spraying the gel coat. So, Keep an eye out for that one. That should be pretty cool. I don't think I've ever shown that on uh, on this channel yet. Huh, I don't know, but it's coming. So in summary, the materials that you're most likely gonna need for doing some of these cosmetic type repairs, you're gonna need some polyester resin, or laminating polyester resin for wetting out the fiberglass. You're also gonna need some laminating non-waxed gel coat that you can color, you know, color match and have on hand for you know whatever as needed. Also, some structural repair putty. I love this stuff. It works very, very well. Uh, as well as some of the, the polyester fairing compound. Now, again, this is a material that contains wax. I would say you could do a little bit of a toss-up if you wanted to use that, or if you wanted to just get a little bottle of the wax additive and mix it in with your gel coat. Either one works. Uh, the, the polyester fairing does sand a lot easier uh, because of uh, a lot easier than the gel coat or certainly than the structural repair putty, just because it's not as dense. Um, that's what makes a fairing compound a fairing compound. It just makes it easy to sand. Uh, beyond that, total buff. Don't skip out on the buffing compound. You try it, you'll love it, trust me. And beyond that, I think, that, I think that's it. So I'm not gonna ramble on. I, haven't, I need to start editing on this, so I'm gonna button this one up. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance, I appreciate it very much. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave those down below. I will do my best to follow up with you. And as always, I wanna thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.